listening fill in the blanks. Let's start. Wildfires are becoming an increasing menace in the western United States, with Southern California being the hardest hit area. There's a reason fire squads battling more frequent blazes in Southern California are having such difficulty containing the flames, despite better preparedness than ever and decades of experience fighting fires fanned by the Santa Ana winds. The wildfires themselves, experts say, are generally hotter, faster, and spread more erratically than in the past. Megafires, also called siege fires, are the increasingly frequent blazes that burn 500,000 acres or more, ten times the size of the average forest fire of 20 years ago. Some recent wildfires are among the biggest ever in California in terms of acreage burned, according to state figures and news reports. Psychologists have long held that a person's character cannot undergo a transformation in any meaningful way and that the key traits of personality are determined at a very young age. However, researchers have begun looking more closely at ways we can change. Positive psychologists have identified 24 qualities we admire, such as loyalty and kindness, and are studying them to find out why they come so naturally to some people. What they're discovering is that many of these qualities amount to habitual behavior that determines the way we respond to the world. The good news is that all this can be learned. Some qualities are less challenging to develop than others, optimism being one of them. However, develop Evolution isn't supposed to run backwards, yet an increasing number of examples show that it does, and that it can sometimes represent the future of a species. The description of any animal as an evolutionary throwback is controversial. For the better part of a century, most biologists have been reluctant to use those words, mindful of a principle of evolution that says evolution cannot run backwards. But as more and more examples come to light and modern genetics enters the scene, that principle is having to be rewritten. Not only are evolutionary throwbacks possible, they sometimes play an important role in the forward march of evolution. One fascinating use of active electroreception, known as the jamming avoidance response mechanism, has been observed between members of some species known as the weakly electric fish. When two such electric fish meet in the ocean using the same frequency, each fish will then shift the frequency of its discharge so that they are transmitting on different frequencies. Doing so prevents their electroreception faculties from becoming jammed. Long before citizens banned radio users first had to yell, get off my frequency, at hapless novices cluttering the airwaves, at least one species had found a way to peacefully and quickly resolve this type of dispute. Hosting the Olympics is often understood to be an excellent way to update a city's sporting infrastructure. The extensive demands of Olympic sports include aquatic complexes, equestrian circuits, shooting ranges, beach volleyball courts, and, of course, an 80,000-seat athletic stadium. Yet these demands are typically only necessary to accommodate a brief influx of athletes from around the world. Despite the enthusiasm many populations initially have for the development of world-class sporting complexes in their hometowns, these complexes typically fall into disuse after the Olympic fervor has waned. Even Australia, home to one of the world's most sportive populations, has left its taxpayers footing a $32 million a year bill for the maintenance of vacant facilities. Certainly, any prospective time travelers may have to overcome more physical and logical hurdles than merely overtaking the speed of light. One such problem, posited by René Bargevel in his 1943 text, Le Voyageur Imprudent, is the so-called grandfather paradox. Bargevel theorized that, if it were possible to go back in time, a time traveler could potentially kill his own grandfather. If this were to happen, however, the time traveler himself would not be born, which is already known to be true. 
In other words, there is a paradox in circumventing an already known future. Time travel is able to facilitate past actions that mean time travel itself cannot occur. Travel has existed since the beginning of time, when primitive man set out, often traversing great distances in search of game, which provided the food and clothing necessary for his survival. Throughout the course of history, people have traveled for purposes of trade, religious conviction, economic gain, war, migration, and other equally compelling motivations. In the Roman era, wealthy aristocrats and high government officials also traveled for pleasure. Seaside resorts located at Pompeii and Herculaneum afforded citizens the opportunity to escape to their vacation villas in order to avoid the summer heat of Rome. Travel, except during the Dark Ages, has continued to grow and, throughout recorded history, has played a vital role in the development of civilizations and their economies. The source of the red is widely known, it is created by anthocyanins, water-soluble plant pigments reflecting the red to blue range of the visible spectrum. They belong to a class of sugar-based chemical compounds also known as flavonoids. What's puzzling is that anthocyanins are actually newly minted, made in the leaves at the same time as the tree is preparing to drop them. But it is hard to make sense of the manufacture of anthocyanins. Why should a tree bother making new chemicals in its leaves when it's already scrambling to withdraw and preserve the ones already there? An important archaeological discovery on the island of Afate in the Pacific archipelago of Vanuatu has revealed traces of an ancient seafaring people, the distant ancestors of today's Polynesians. The site came to light only by chance. An agricultural worker, digging in the grounds of a derelict plantation, scraped open a grave, the first of dozens in a burial ground some 3,000 years old. It is the oldest cemetery ever found in the Pacific Islands, and it harbors the remains of an ancient people archaeologists call the Lapida. They were daring blue water adventurers who used basic canoes to rove across the ocean. But they were not just explorers. They were also pioneers who carried with them everything they would need to build new lives, their livestock, taro seedlings, and Excellence does not emerge without appropriate help. To reach an exceptionally high standard in any area very able children need the means to learn which includes material to work with and focus challenging tuition and the encouragement to follow their dream. There appears to be a qualitative difference in the way the intellectually highly able think, compared with more average ability or older pupils, for whom external regulation by the teacher often compensates for lack of internal regulation. To be at their most effective in their self-regulation, all children can be helped to identify their own ways of learning, metacognition, which will include strategies of planning, monitoring, evaluation, and choice of what to learn.